International Space Station. We are flying around the planet with 28,000 kilometers an hour, about 400 kilometers altitude around the planet here. Now, it's a big space station and uh, it's about 1200 cubic meters, it's 100 by 80 meters and a lot of modules. And I'm going to show you around in, the, in the, all the modules. We are here in the top module and uh, on top of the space station is the Japanese model JOP where we have all kinds of, uh, of cargo and, uh, and that is connected to the gem and that's where we go now. The gem is the Japanese module. We leave the earth here. Bye bye earth. So the Japanese module is uh, uh, pretty big. It's one of the biggest modules. It's, it's nice. It's clean. It's uh, uh, it's roomy. And uh, one of the features that we have here is uh, an airlock. So this is uh, an airlock where we can put in payloads, and that goes up outside to the uh, external platform. You see, here also two windows, so we can uh, we can watch the outside world uh, and uh, activities on the platform through the windows. It's night at the moment, so there's not much to see. But uh, we'll see a bit of that later. Now we have a strange effect, because now you look down on me, or straight at me, but then, if uh, all of a sudden you turn around the corner, then uh, it looks a bit different. So here we're floating in the gem. And this is a place where uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, scientific wrecks, express wrecks, we have a rack uh, for fluid physics, you mention it and uh, we have it. Uh, of course, the, the work here is done by all the different astronauts. So uh, it, it can be that uh, a European is working here, Japanese, American, uh, whoever. Uh, and that's an interesting aspect that we, we use the whole space for all of us. You see that I'm uh, uh, standing on a rack. This is the, the Melfi. Uh, this is where we freeze things. Uh, so this is uh, until minus 100. It, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's pretty cold, and that's why we have uh, blood samples, urine samples uh, for return to Earth. So there is where we save it. You see that I hold my feet under handrails, so we have to, because we're floating, uh, you keep uh, control of yourself with these handrails, with bungee cords, things like that, and everything this has to be fixed somehow. So we have, we have everywhere we have Velcro. If a little pen like this, there's a little piece of Velcro on it, and you stick it to the wall. You know, we have tape everywhere to fix things. Uh, we have this kind of Velcro straps, so you can fix it around cables. And uh, so you need all these things to uh, to keep your stuff in place, because otherwise you lose it. It just floats away, and it doesn't fall down. You know, so if you if I want to if if I don't follow this for a, for a certain amount of time, it's gone. And uh, it's hard to find. There is a place where you can find things. And this is here, for example, on the inlet filters. For example, some raisins, which I showed to my children, but uh, that you can uh, eat from the air. And uh, they escape. And once you, uh, after a while, you find them back at, uh, at the air inlet. So that's always a good place to look for things. So, if we continue, then uh, you see everywhere laptops. So uh, this is something that uh, we have uh, uh, we have around everywhere for for the different racks. We have laptops for our daily work. Uh, we have laptops for the systems. All these kind of things. And what you see as well here is stowage. You, know, you see everywhere we uh, the room is used. So we have behind uh, behind all these uh, straps we have stowage that goes three layers deep and. Uh, it's always a, a challenge to uh, to find your thing. So it's not only like this. It's also, for example, in a rack like this. So you can tilt these racks, and uh, it's very interesting to demonstrate what is uh, behind a certain rack like this. So you can see that also behind there is uh, cargo. And this is a soft cover, but you can also tilt the whole rack. So it's possible to to move a whole rack. That requires, of course, some more work. That's clear. Okay. Then we continue this way, and it's all floating. 
and that's a nice thing from space flight. The floating itself is nice, working with microgravity is a bit more difficult. You see that all the, the, the modules, they can be closed with hatches. Here we have an example of a hatch. So in case there is uh, uh, an issue uh, with, uh, with uh, a leak, for example, then we can quickly close uh, these hatches. Uh, during my mission, uh, we had once uh, uh, a debris avoidance maneuver possibility. Uh, so there was something coming to the station and that was not tracked. And as a security measure, a uh, safety measure, we closed the hatches and, uh, and waited in our Soyuz. Everything was fine, but this was a, a moment that he did close uh, the, the, the hatches to the modules. On the side, uh, I mean, if we talk about emergency cases, uh, we have uh, uh, equipment for emergencies. Of course, if you lose the, the, the light, if you lose the lamps, then we have uh, flashlights. But we also have fire, for, for, for fire we have uh, oxygen bottles with masks, we have fire extinguishers. And uh, on, on a lot of places in the space station we have this equipment in case we need it. Luckily we don't have this problem yet. And, uh, uh, but we have our fire drills, for example. Okay. Then, here we are in uh, Note 2. We talk about that a bit more. Uh, but interesting to, uh, to mention is uh, this hatch. Because this is the hatch where, for example, uh, the Dragon docks. So, uh, at the moment, uh, I'm, I'm watching into uh, space and below us is the Earth. But uh, a little while ago we had here the Dragon and in the future there will be uh, more of these uh, visiting vehicles there. We use it now for example to stow water. This bags, what you have here, this is water. So we have a lot of water on board for all kind of uh, uh, purposes. We can drink it, we can also use it uh, to make oxygen out. So uh, this uh, water is a very important uh, thing on board because we use it in many ways. So we cross and we go into the Columbus module. Now it's a busy module, it's a European module, it's pretty compact and uh, I, I've been working on every rack here. Uh, this is uh, a very interesting module and it's used a lot for example for, uh, for, for medical research uh, because we have here the HRF rack, so the, the US racks here as well, so it's not it's a European module, but it's uh, it's filled with racks from uh, from uh, other agencies as well, and uh, it, it's it's interesting to work here. It's very full. Uh, sometimes we work here with uh, with with several people. Uh, here, for example, I recently installed uh, Altia, which is a radiation experiment. We have the BioLab here. Uh, uh, beyond that, we have uh, physiology racks. What I uh, mentioned about on top of you. Uh, on so if you, if you look up here, the, this is the fluid uh, science lab. So here we do fluid experiments. So we, you see also the ceiling is, uh, is used for, uh, for all kind of uh, experiment stuff. Now, medical experiments uh, uh, can be a lot. We, we have uh, ultrasound, and we have an ultrasound machine. So we make echoes of uh, our eyes, of our heart, our muscles, etc. And, uh, but we can also take blood samples. Uh, we have uh, EEG, ECG, uh, we have a centrifuge here for the blood samples. So this is a, say, a, a mini mini hospital. And also here you see that everything has to stick to the wall with uh, Velcro or sticky tape. Uh, tape everywhere just to keep things in place, uh, like the Velcro straps. Um, on this side you see the, the monitors, we also do some, uh, some PEO events, so let's say a perpetuation events, so we talk to the ground uh, with, uh, with uh, all the, uh, these cameras. This is the MARES, this is a, 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 a machine to measure uh, muscle coordination, muscle strength and see how, uh, how uh, bad the, uh, the atrophy is. Well, we train a lot, but uh, we are going to measure uh, because we don't use our muscles so much here, uh, how, how serious that problem is and what we can do about it, yeah, to what kind of exercise is best. So, here you see an example how we uh, get rid of trash. We have these kind of things to put trash in. And, uh, and like I uh, showed before, behind uh, these uh, covers we have all kind of uh, uh, cargo. And uh, that same for the ceiling. 
You also, you see, uh, we have the lamps everywhere. We have uh, ventilation outlets. Um, we have power bricks. You see all these things, uh, this, this blue bricks for, for power, power supply. You see that a lot. And uh, so you have to be careful when you float around because there's cables everywhere and you don't want to, uh, to uh, get stuck behind that. So we go out of Columbus and uh, we go to Node 2, which is an interesting place because this is where we sleep. And work. So we have uh, some uh, work tables so you can do all kinds of things and repair uh, equipment. So this is, uh, you can move this around and here we can do repairs. Now the sleeping. Uh, it's interesting because it doesn't matter because we float so you can sleep on the ceiling or wherever you want. So that means that, uh, for example, uh, uh, Gennady uh, is sleeping on the ceiling here. And there's somebody sleeping on the floor. And Joe and me are sleeping upright. So some kind of cupboard. So you have your own place and that is nice. It's a, it's a place where you have your own stuff, you have your sleeping bag, you have some computers and uh, you keep your, uh, your, your stuff in here, family pictures uh, and things like that. And that's a sure place, so that's, it's nice to have your own place uh, where you uh, can uh, retreat, you can uh, well, uh, watch a movie, do your email and things like that. So this is a nice, uh, a, a nice area. Uh, there's four of us here. There's two more, uh, but they sleep in the Russian segment. So we float through the lab. Uh, one of the things in the lab you can see straight away this is the bike. So people uh, can exercise. We have to exercise every day to stay in a bit in, uh, in shape. So for cardiovascular reasons, uh, the biking is, is very good. It's good for your heart muscle because also your heart muscle. Uh, uh, goes down a bit and regenerates a bit. In here, uh, a lot of uh, scientific research as well. In the US, uh, US lab. Uh, we have uh, uh, the also here a Melfi uh, freezer, and uh, we also have uh, actually we have uh, another sleeping quarters for the seventh crew member. Let's let's see if he's home. Here is the seventh crew member. This is Robonaut. So Robonaut has been active, and uh, who knows in the future will do uh, the routine job for us, the routine jobs on, uh, or dangerous jobs. Now, here we have camera equipment. For example, we have a lot of cameras. Uh, some of the cameras we cannot use anymore because of. Uh, uh, yeah, because they're getting old and uh, so now and then we get uh, new equipment up. We have on the ceiling you see a lot of you see a lot of things, uh, a lot of cables, uh, all this equipment we work with. This could be uh, for uh, air quality measurements for example or we have over there things, uh, equipment for radiation. Uh, we have the express racks. Uh, we have portable equipment or semi-portable because it's installed here for a while. This is the portable pulmonary function system with a lot of different cables so it's always a challenge to uh, get that activated. Um, we have this uh, microgravity science glove box. It's always nice uh, for, for me because it's built in, uh, by a Dutch company in Holland and uh, this is uh, a nice place where we uh, do experiments with uh, with, uh, for example, uh, combustion or uh, uh, equipment with uh, with dangerous uh, materials inside. So it's all contained in this uh, in this glove box. So we pass by the bike. Just finishing up. Now to see this is one of the three ways where we train. We run. We do fitness. Uh, so weightlifting or what is it? Uh, Against the, <laughs> against the vacuum and we do the biking. We have also, uh, in case we have uh, a, a medical problem, we have a medical rack. This is a medical rack with a lot of uh, equipment in there for, uh, 
uh, for serious cases like a defibrillator uh, uh, and all kind of other equipment for resuscitation, uh, but also just uh, the normal packs for yeah for medication and uh, for minor infections and things like that. And this whole rack is filled with equipment where we what we use to see uh, how the the uh, bacteria growth is uh, on board, uh, what the water quality is, uh, sound, uh, sound levels, all these kind of things, the environmental health system, this is all done from this, uh, from this rack. We even have a stretcher, you can imagine if somebody really has a heart attack, which is very unlikely because the astronauts are all pretty healthy people, but uh, in case you need a stretcher to put somebody uh, in a fixed position, then we have that here. Um, we are on this side. We are in a robotic area, so this means that from here we can uh, operate the robotic arm. We have two of these stations, uh, the robotic workstations. We have two of them. One is in the in the, the cupola, and one is here in the lab. And with these monitors, you can see what's going on, what the arm is doing, and uh, uh, and yeah, where the, the spaceship is or where the, the the payload is. And this is operated here with two hand controllers. And uh, uh, there's even a simulator for that, and that simulator is on the other side. So uh, with this we can uh, can practice for for certain robotic activities. This area is interesting because this is our food warmer. So in here we uh, we can put uh, our uh, our food, and uh, we uh, we heat it up, and we have a, a printer, also important of course. And, uh, so the, the food is this kind of packages, we'll come to that later, and uh, it gets pretty warm. So beside the food we have, uh, let's see on the other side, this is important to show, in case of an emergency we have these books, and several uh, strategic places we have these emergency books, in case we lose power. Uh, and lights and computers, then we still have the books and see uh, which actions we have to take. And if there is an emergency, there are three emergencies, we will see this here. A fire, a leak, or uh, a leak in the, from the pressure, or an ammonia leak, when ammonia comes into the cabin. Um, the communication with the ground goes via these ATUs, this uh, audio uh, terminal units, and this is how we talk. We have two channels, uh, which we uh, use mostly uh, we use channel 2 in the US segment and channel 1 in the Russian segment, but that can be uh, that can be switched. So from here we move over to uh, node 1, one of the first uh, modules that, were, that was uh, launched. It uh, was docked to the FGB, the FGB was the first one, uh, Saria in 98, and uh, the next one was uh, this node. So this is a pretty old node. Actually, uh, this is the place where I slept during my first flight on the floor here. There is now something else where we get to later, but I slept here uh, above this hatch. So this is the place where uh, where we eat. Here we have our food, we have our dinner table, and uh, we can watch a movie here that, that we do on say on Friday evenings. And uh, also here, if you see the table, bungees, velcro great tape to, to uh, fix, uh, the fix your food. And yeah, it's uh, of course difficult to, uh, to uh, keep clean, so you see some spots here and there from, uh, from the coffee or uh, whatever. Uh, we have uh, also nice, uh, some nice stuff on the wall that everybody can, uh, can use. We have our utensils here, here's my spoon for example, we keep here. And uh, uh, yeah, if we look around, because I'd like to show you where the food comes from, uh, here we can put all kind of things uh, for straw. Oh yeah, this is maybe interesting. This is a barcode reader. So whenever we have something uh, deployed, be it uh, a T-shirt, tissues, or whatever, uh, then with the barcode reader we can let the system know where we took it from and uh, where it goes and then because it's a big station with a lot of items uh, this way the ground and, and, uh, we, and we ourselves we know uh, where uh, we left something it might be a week it might be half a year uh, before that somebody used it and nobody knows then where it is from memory so we need this system um, the food we get from here 
Here we have all kinds of different food that comes in big packages. And we have uh, here a package for tea, for drinks, meats, extra food, veggies, etc. Et so uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty good. There's a lot of variation in it. And if it's not good enough, then we have our bonus food. So we have bonus food containers. So things you like specifically, uh, particularly, you, you can get from this, uh, from this bonus food containers. Uh, also, uh, say chocolate from your hometown and things like that. It's, uh, it's all here. This is a note, means there's a lot of things attached to it. One of the things is, uh, especially from official point of view, very interesting. This is uh, the crew lock and the airlock. So this is where the U.S. spacewalks uh, take uh, start. So we have uh, uh, here the crew lock where people get well, it's a dressing room. They they get dressed. They they put the, the space suits on and. Uh, uh, camp out here uh, to get uh, rid of the nitrogen in the blood etc so this is a place to prepare all materials are there and then once uh, people are ready they go into the airlock and in the airlock there is the hatch and from there you can uh, go outside now the spacesuits are mini spaceships with their own uh, supply of, uh, of oxygen with their own radio even own propulsion in case of, uh, of need uh, so and of course it's a pressurized hull. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the, the spacesuits are very uh, very interesting uh, mini spaceships. So um, so there the airlock and all the equipment. So this hatch will close, and then people can uh, go uh, outside from the from the from that airlock to the rescue station. We also have uh, of course. Uh, the possibility to go outside from the Russian segment and uh, that we will see later so the Russians have different uh, different space suits. so we float let's go to the cellar and uh, we had visiting modules going with the space shuttle these were the MPLMs and now we have one permanently attached and this is this is our cellar and uh, here we have a lot of stuff so let's float down This is this is like diving in a cave, and that's why we put this up here because it reminds us a bit of nature. These are the normal straps that are around food containers, but we made this our little underwater garden. With uh, it's like diving uh, off the coast of uh, of Los Angeles, you know, you feel like a sea lion here, floating through the through the kelp. So this is a, a place where we, uh, we stow a lot of things. We have uh, we have food here. Uh, but also trash, you know, uh, old clothes, uh, expired food, equipment that we don't use anymore. We store it there until it gets uh, it gets uh, loaded in a in a cargo ship and then gets uh, yeah it burns up in the atmosphere. So it's a difficult place to orient yourself because you know it all looks the same and uh, sometimes you don't know what is left and right and up and down anymore. Interesting place. And it's called. It's now called the PMM, so it's the the, the pressurized. I don't actually know what the second M means. Module, the pressurized, pressurized, something module. Now you come out of it, and then you think, okay, where am I now? Because you have to orient yourself. Uh, okay, what was up and down? And oh yeah, there's the airlock. So the one we didn't have yet is on this side, <laughs> and that is the the, the note. Note one, that's a note three, and that's an interesting module. We can go there later because I like to show you also the outside, and that is something nice for uh, for the end. So if we I'll be, if I'll we be out in just a minute, Andre. It's okay. And uh, so from uh, from this side, this is the, the say the end of the USOS, so the the, the the US part. So we go now to the, the Russian part of the space station, and uh, we go first. Uh, through the, the docking port, say the docking between the first Russian part and the first uh, US part, and that is the PMM. And it has a certain shape, it had to do with the docking of the space shuttle, uh, so it, it, it goes a bit like a, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, a tube. And here 
we save if we have our uh, clothes, our washing clothes, uh, dry wipes, white wipes, uh, trousers, uh, whatever you can think of, your personal hygiene stuff, toothbrushes, it's all here. So it's, it's always an interesting place to, to fly through. And so follow me, then we go to the rest of the segment. Immediately, there is a different sound, there's more noise, different colors, different style, uh, docking mechanisms are different. Uh, so, this is, uh, this is the, 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 the front part of the FGB. The FGB was the first module that was launched. And uh, so you see all these tubes here, so this is for ventilation between the US segment and uh, the Russian segment. You see the hatches here. Um, we see uh, on all the hatches we see this kind of uh, uh, sensors. So this these sense the, the the pressure. If there is a, a pressure loss somewhere, there will be an airflow, and this airflow will be registered. And this way we can see on the computers where the, the leak probably is. So everywhere we see this this uh, these valves for uh, yeah uh, closing uh, the, the system, uh, controlling the pressure. We see emergency equipment, we have uh, gas masks, uh, we have fire extinguishers, uh, cable cutters and things like that. All, all of strategic places. And of course communication equipment here on this side. So with this we, uh, we can communicate with the ground. It's a bit more narrow, so let's go through the FCB. FGB is uh, one of the places where we have first had our hygiene station. So this was uh, here uh, and it's still in use with the, with the Russians. So this was the, uh, before the, all the other stuff we had, uh, we had this part here. The FGB is half full with, uh, with equipment. So this is uh, for the toilet. Uh, we have uh, uh, old, uh, a piece of equipment of a treadmill for example, food boxes. So this is uh, a lot used for storage. Also behind this, behind this uh, cupboard, there's a lot of equipment for uh, for the whole uh, for the whole station. So this is a storage module. The first one, pretty old. What's interesting with the Russian uh, modules is that they have Velcro all over the place. So the whole wall is Velcro. I like that personally because you can always stick something to it. Let's continue. So, floating through here, we have uh, ammonia respirators. So for everybody, personal, and uh, this is uh, in case of an ammonia leak, because that will be in the U.S. segment. So we immediately get out of there, close the hatches, and then we put on masks, and then we can measure. Uh, if there is indeed a uh, high concentration of ammonia, very unlikely, but we uh, we are prepared to uh, to save uh, to be safe for that. So from the FGB functional cargo block or Saria, we continue. Uh, to the uh, SM, which is the, say, the, the bridge of the ship, so the surface module. So here we are in the surface module, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, this is where uh, the, the space station is, uh, say, controlled with engines. Uh, this is the, the heart of the, the Russian part of the space station and you see it's very much used with lots of cameras, lots of stuff, lots of computers. An important thing for safety is this. These are uh, the, the metal computers. so here we can see the pressure independent of any electronics or whatsoever. This is the pure, pure pressure that we uh, see here. 
on this place uh, the people can control uh, the, the progress, uh, we control the ATV, uh, so we, this is a place for visiting cargo ships uh, for, uh, for the Russian part. You see here the laptops uh, and we have our, uh, a lot of windows. Here on the floor of the SM there's a lot of different windows for taking pictures. Fix at night so you, you prevent reflections, so you have these kind of things. And uh, also here, over, bunches everywhere to uh, stick your feet under. This is a device to measure your mass, your body mass, uh, because we don't have weight, but we still have mass and we can measure that with this device. Talking about cameras, so we can, we can take pictures of pretty much uh, pretty small details actually. We have here, for example, also procedure books. So, uh, if it's not electronic, we, uh, for the Russian systems, we have uh, all the procedure books here. Here's the M radio. So, with this, uh, we can talk with schools and uh, amateur radio uh, stations. Here we have uh, the medical rack, the Russian medical rack for uh, for their experiments. So. We don't use that so much. And that was the small part. Here we have the big part of the SM. And uh, here we can get water from in this system with a pump and you get your drinking water. Also a food warmer box we have here and all kind of equipment. Uh, for, of course the communication equipment to talk with the ground. So uh, these are the, the, the communication panels that we have uh, in the, in, the, in the Russian second. So this is uh, where we train a lot for in, uh, in Star City. This side, the dinner table. Here, part of it was uh, is moved to uh, Note, uh, Note 1. And uh, this is the, uh, the, the first, the original part. And uh, here we have the food warmer for, for cans. They put our food in, you heat it up. This is where you trash your food. So this is uh, very good bags uh, for moist, moist food and leftovers. This is where you get your water. So you connect a bag here and uh, put the handle down and then you push there how much, how many milliliters you want and then you have your, uh, your soup or your tea or whatsoever. This is the treadmill from, uh, from the Russian side. Uh, of course you connect yourself. So with, with bunches so you don't float away. Two Kayutas, which uh, I mentioned already, there's four in the note two and there's two here, so this is where uh, two of the Russian cosmonauts sleep. We continue here, because here's the Russian toilet. Later on we will see the US toilet, but this is the Russian toilet. And uh, the Russian toilet, well, it's the same actually as the American one, because it's the same device. Uh, this is for urine. Urine is, uh, is used to, to, uh, to make water again, so drinking water or technical water. So we use the, use the urine. And uh, uh, the solid waste goes in these containers and when they're full they are replaced and finally that uh, burns up in the atmosphere. Now for half a year uh, there is a European visitor which is the automated transfer vehicle. And this is connected on the back side of the space station. So this is the ATV number three, and uh, it brings a lot of cargo, but also uh, water, for example, uh, air, oxygen uh, that can that the that is pumped to the space station. So it, it provides the space station with a lot of uh, consumables, cargo, uh, air, water, but also fuel. Behind here is the engine part. Uh, so this is uh, this is pressurized and. Behind this uh, wall is the unpressurized section of ATV, uh, and there, for example, uh, we have the fuel tanks uh, because the fuel, which is also part of the transporter, but uh, the, the fuel is used for for boosting. So uh, we have uh, progress, 
uh, the Russian cargo ship uh, for, uh, for fueling the engines of the space station and for boosting. But ATV has a, uh, has a great uh, position to, to put uh, the space station uh, in a higher orbit because we lose a bit of altitude every time. So here we are stowing it now with, uh, with uh, yeah, things we don't need anymore, be it foam, be it uh, uh, trash, and, uh, be it old pieces of equipment. And when it's full, after half a year, it disappears. So we fly back now and we go to see some side modules. By the way, on the hatches, you see some clamps for extra uh, security and also again this flow meters. This is uh, on top of the space station. So the space station is on top. So we're looking up now. And uh, yeah, it's full, even with the spacesuit for Russian spacewalks. Uh, you see here towels. You see all everywhere. You see the clothing and towels dry because we need all the, the humidity. Uh, and because we recycle the water, so uh, so there's things like uh, trash, uh, parts for experiments, uh, equipment, and uh, attached to it is uh, is uh, a Soyuz. So we have one Soyuz on top and one Soyuz on the bottom of the space station. So this is the Soyuz from uh, from Joe, Gennady, and Sergey. And uh, we will later on see uh, the Soyuz from, uh, from, the, uh, from the 3M, from the Don and Alec and me. Uh, here you see how, the, how the, the, the docking mechanism works a bit. So this is the hatch from the Soyuz. On the front you have this, this, uh, this probe that is normally, uh, before docking, extended. This probe gets into contact with this. Let's put the light on. Okay. This is the part from the station. So the probe gets into this hole and then pulls itself in. And once it's fixed, then these two sides are attached to each other. There are big hooks. They grab each other and close. And then there's a good fix. And then the inside hatch can open. So this one's open and this one opens this way. And people can uh, get in. So this is how uh, the Russian docking mechanism works, and also for the ATV, by the way. So that's the same principle. Also here, emergency equipment, pressure meter, pressure uh, sensors, and things like that. So from the top, we go to the other side. Hard to follow. So, so this is the, the docking compartment for, uh, for the Russian side. So from here, spacewalks are done. So here we see two spacesuits or lots. They're a bit different, uh, of course the principle is the same, but uh, different design than, uh, than the US spacesuits. Two windows, so from here you, you can also uh, see uh, planet Earth. And uh, so these hatches will then, one of these hatches goes open for uh, a Russian spacewalk. On this docking module, we have a progress. So this is the Russian cargo ship, the, the, the progress. So we have ATV, we have Dragon, HCV, and the Russian one is the progress. And uh, this is how the progress looks inside. So this is now used to, uh, to stow cargo, uh, and, and now to stow trash, and then it burns up.
always always nice if uh, if a progress uh, ship is coming because it brings uh, all kind of fresh fruit, for example. So we're always waiting for a progress. We go back down or up? Where was it? So we go back to the FGB and it uh, depends on how you look at it. So now I'm flying backwards over the ceiling, down, well... Here we are at uh, the beginning of the Russian uh, at the FGB, and there's the US segment. And here is MIM 1. And on that one, so this is down from the station, is our Soyuz stop. So let's go there, we can have a look in the Soyuz. So here we are in the Bay O. So this is uh, say the living module, this uh, the little uh, module on top of the landing capsule. And uh, so this is where we spent two days on our way to the station and a half a day on our way back. Well, not in here anymore. Uh, this has uh, uh, this is a place to stow our spacesuits, for example. So uh, let's see. This is done. Then we have my spacesuit. So it's waiting for me, and uh, so and, uh, when, when it's time to return, we get in here, we close the hatch, this hatch here, and then we, uh, we prepare. So here also this mechanism what I talked about, so this hatch is closed, and then we go down into uh, the Soyuz landing capsule, and this is pretty tight. So, this is the seat of the commander where I'm uh, sitting. This is the hatch, so the hatch closes like this. And uh, then after uh, uh, after we enter the atmosphere, uh, we, we are about uh, 100 kilometers, 140 kilometers, we, we separate, and 140 kilometers we separate uh, from the living module and the engine module, which is below us, below us. And only this part, with three persons sitting, here, only this part has a heat shield, and that comes down through the uh, through the atmosphere. So this will be the outside hatch. So once we land, people open this hatch, and uh, and then uh, or we do it ourselves, and then we can get out again. I will try to get to my uh, to my seat here to see how much uh, we can still see them. So I will be on the left seat. It's tight if you're used to all this uh, station. Uh, roomy place then uh, this is tight. I close the hatch for a moment to move over. So here I'm sitting I have my procedure books here so whenever it's needed we can uh, we can land the headset you have to mention we do this in our spacesuit so it's gonna be very tight and uh, so all the equipment is here, uh, uh, so you can imagine that you cannot bring much back. So that's it's good that we have Dragon nowadays, so we can also bring uh, examples, examples from experiments back, for example. Let me give you the camera, so I'll show a little bit how it looks like the inside.
Okay. So here we have the dashboard and the buttons to use, important valves, little window. Okay. And on the other side, there's the seats. Okay. Back to the PMA, to the US Airplane. So we're back in the US segment here, coming from the, the Soyuz, which is down, <laughs> uh, to the uh, Mimadin PMA, back in Note 1. All the connections and one module we didn't see yet, and I leave this for the end because it has also the cupola, and that is Note 3. Note 3 is very interesting from an orientation point of view because, well, we have the feeling that we are upright now, so uh, we're floating inside here, and it well, looks okay. Uh, that's that's the toilet, but uh, the first thing is already strange that uh, my shoes, for example, are here on the ceiling. And why do I need shoes in space? Uh, well, uh, I want to run. So the running, so it is a harness which you connect to what? To the treadmill. The treadmill is 90 degrees. So this is the treadmill. So this is already a 90 degree uh, change. So you, fix, you take your harness and you fix that to this, uh, to this uh, thing. Crunchies. So you can stay on one place and you can really run, otherwise you float off, of course. So then you run on this treadmill. And here you can watch a movie, here you can uh, get your, uh, your protocol, uh, what you have to run. It's, every day it's a bit, uh, a bit different. And uh, so this is how we, uh, we do our running. Now, if you turn around, how I see it, then the whole module looks different. Because now all of a sudden the toilet is here, on the, it's saying, on the floor so the whole thing looks different this is a, a different place if I run here I have a totally different view than if I do an experiment with this device or experiment that I, where I measure the water with so it looks again totally different that, that is all of a sudden the floor and, uh, and I'm working uh, 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 upside down now if we are in a normal way again <laughs> then we get to the the next thing uh, of this uh, of this great note, and, uh, and that is the toilet. So this is, uh, like I said, like uh, like the Russian toilet. Uh, of course, uh, there's another uh, a bit of another layout, but the toilet is, it's in principle the same. There's also, by the way, a lot of electronics for it, because behind uh, uh, all this the boards, we have all the equipment to. To, uh, to get the, the water in all the systems to clean it. Now, under this floor, I, have, I can show you a little bit, uh, for example, how it looks like and how the, the water is, uh, is cleaned. Let's open this a little bit, so that I can, can have a little look on uh, the equipment that is used for cleaning the water. For example, you have the, the big tanks here, and so we, we uh, connect cables, and sometimes we take the tanks out and, uh, and uh, and, and put other things in, or uh, and now we have nowadays new tanks which can be uh, reused. So it's becoming more and more uh, recycling. 
and also the equipment can be reused now so that's good very interesting the water is then uh, purified and like I said uh, we use also the water for example to uh, make oxygen out and that's behind this track for example and this is the port where the oxygen comes from so we use uh, the water to make oxygen so what's left over you have oxygen and you have hydrogen the hydrogen would normally uh, be thrown into space uh, but we can also use the hydrogen because the air that we breathe out has carbon dioxide and if you combine the hydrogen with the carbon dioxide you have you can have water again so you get your water back and we have still methane left uh, but maybe I can have a little burner next time or something and uh, we can even use the, the, the methane for, uh, for, the, for future. So we are really recycling a lot of water which is important because every, every uh, ounce, uh, every kilogram costs a lot of money to bring up. So we have, uh, this is a hygiene place, uh, we have uh, stuff here to, uh, to, uh, to wash, we can use uh, the toilet here, we have no rinse shampoo so we don't have to use a lot of water to wash, we don't have a shower. Then we get to the, the other interesting uh, exercise device, which is ARED. And uh, this is uh, we, we, for weightlifting. Well, we don't have weights, so we use vacuum cylinders. But you see, it's upside down again. So this is how we see it if we are on it. And uh, so we turn around, and this is the place where we stand on. So <laughs> it's really interesting module with all the orientation. <laughs> So this is uh, where we stand, we can uh, do the weightlifting here with this bar, uh, we have all kind of uh, li a little bench, a, a place to, uh, to for, for heel racing, a little, a little uh, bar, so it's a, it's a great device, uh, we can uh, uh, train our arms, if we connect uh, another piece, a bar of uh, on this hook, and then we can train our arms. And we do this with vacuum cylinders, so we have two big cylinders here, so there's no weight, but we, we pull vacuum and uh, of course this creates uh, a lot of force and this is how we uh, train uh, uh, our, our, our muscles. So to and not only our muscles, to put pressure on the bones is a very important aspect, so we, we uh, prevent uh, or at least uh, prevent total bone loss. Uh, which you have in space because yeah if you're floating in half a year uh, you get brittle bones in that sense uh, and so you can lose a, a percentage of, of bone density and with this device uh, we can uh, we can do a lot against that now and then the final part which is the most beautiful thing of the station for your free time but also for work with robotics or visiting spaceships is the cupola and uh, it's pointed downwards but for us it's upwards and uh, this is a fantastic place where we have uh, 360 degrees uh, view of the planet. You see, uh, you will see a lot of cameras here because you can imagine that it's nice to, uh, to take pictures and uh, to film our beautiful place. So we open some shutters because we want to protect the windows as much as possible from the from the outside and possible uh, debris and then we can have a fantastic view so here uh, we see uh, our Soyuz and behind it the progress that we just uh, visited both and if you look down you see the Russian segment and on the end you see the automated transfer vehicle the very end where we also were if we turn it around we see the PMM which is the cellar that we saw and here we see the front of the space station with left Columbus here the US lab in the middle and on the other side we see the gem right the external platform and here we see part of the truss with the big solar panels and if you look straight up or down and I think we are looking yes at the Amazon great view Uh, 
Okay, so we go down from Cupola and then we finish our tour. I hope you liked it. It's a great space station, beautiful, a lot of different things to show, and uh, it's great to float around here, have things floating around you, and uh, a beautiful view. So I hope you liked the tour. I hope it's a bit clear. I, uh, even I get confused sometimes. So yeah, it's an interesting place.